Maybe we'll deal with some things today. There's so many things happening in the world today. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 6 today. There's a famous, um, famous um, sermon of Jesus, well attended. And the question was, why was he well attended? He had not done any miracles. He, has not, he, he, wasn't, he hasn't started raising the dead. But Matthew 5, 6, 7 is the great message, the first message of his, that Jesus spoke to people. And he wasn't telling them about heaven or hell. It wasn't threatening them. It was already, he was telling them what was inside them, that God um, has already forgiven them and this is what they will need to do. In verse 25 to 34, the Passion Transition, he said, this is why I tell you to never be worried about your life for all that you need will be provided such as food, water, clothing, everything your body needs. Isn't there more to your life than a meal? Isn't your body more than clothing? Look at all the birds. Do you think they worry about their existence? They don't plant or reap or store up food, yet your heavenly Father provides them each with food. Aren't you much more valuable to your Father than they? So which one of you, by worrying, could add anything to your life? And why will you worry about your clothing? Look at all the beautiful flowers of the field. They don't walk or toil, and yet not even Solomon in all his splendor was robed, was robed in beauty more than one of these. So if God has clothed the media with hay, which is here for such a short time, and then dried up and burned up, won't he provide for you the clothes you need? Even though you live with such little feet, so then forsake your worries. Look at your brother and say, forsake your worries. Why will you say, what will he eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For that is what the unbelievers chase after. Doesn't your heavenly father already know the things your bodies need, require? So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him. Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. Refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal, but deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You can also read from New King James Version. I, I put it there. Verse 25, 28 says, So why do you worry about clothing? Today, my message is divine invitation. Divine invitation. Worry or trust. Worry or trust. Jesus, in the Sermon of the Mount, was a new rabbi with authority. The Hebrew call is the rabbi with Shemika. It's a rabbi, you can be a rabbi with authority or a rabbi without authority. After you graduate from the school of the books, you enter the school of discipleship for another 18 years. No wonder you didn't, there was no uh, uh, record of Jesus' life from the age of 12 to 30. He was in the school of discipleship and by 30, he was commissioned as a rabbi with two authority. The authority of John the Baptist and the authority of the Father himself, who commissioned him as a rabbi with authority, who can now start his own school. His own school. If you are a rabbi without authority, you can't start your own school. And so everybody was coming to hear the new rabbi. There were two rabbis in the, life, in the lifetime of Jesus, but they were said they died about when Jesus was um, in his late teenage age. And uh, they believed that Rabbi Alel was the one that raised, that trained Jesus, and there was another call, called Rabbi Shammai. These were the rabbis that had authority, and when they say binding and losing, every rabbi has his own yoke. Every rabbi, what is it? Is, is the one he, you can do that he will tell you to do, the one you cannot do. That's why you see they're always asking them. It was said before, this is what we need to do. So they wanted to come and hear him to say, because they said his own yoke is easy. His own yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. And my body is light. And so he was talking to them. And he said so many things from Matthew chapter 5. In verse 6, he wanted to deal with something. There are three things he dealt with in, in, in chapter 6, but we'll look at one. He dealt with one thing that we'll look at that is plaguing the world today, plaguing everybody today. Plaguing everybody. People are thinking, what will next year be like in our nation? Some people are thinking, what will, what will my life be like? Well, what will the life of my children be like? I want to give them a good, op good opportunity in life. 
And I, I, w- I, want to, I want to secure their future as we have secured the future initiative here. I want to secure their future so that they will not suffer what I suffered. The question I need to ask today, do you trust God with yourself? Do you trust God with yourself? Do you trust God with yourself? Do you? Do, we, uh, do you trust your future into the hands of God? Or you trust it into your own hands that is there today and gone tomorrow? If you look at the creation, at creation, you will see that God is trustworthy. If you look at creation. And Jesus was telling them about to worry. You see, in the making of an aeroplane, the landing and the taking of an aeroplane, it was about the vulture bed. Go and check a vulture. A vulture, before it takes off, must run and take off. And when it lands, it must run. The bat is, with a, is a bed without eyes, but flies and none of them collide. I've seen bats flying, and they don't collide. In fact, they hang upside down. You, you, you are the one that said they hang upside down. To them, they are straight because they don't have eyes. And how can they move like that? Same, same thing. The spider has been making suspension bridges. And today we have suspension bridges. Most design of cars, if you look at the front, it's like the eyes of an ant or an insect. Why do they do that? Because creation shows the trustworthiness of God. The trustworthiness of God. There's no day you put food in your stomach, including you put poison, you must digest. Why? The trustworthiness of God. A little as the ant, he can take care of the ant. What about me? One day I saw in this, as I was exercising, I saw a mango on the tree. It's still there, but it's been eaten by birds. I said, so even God can put food there for them. What about me? Jesus said, take no thought of your life. It, 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 when we say take no thought, many people think, uh, does he think I should not think? No, he said, don't worry. Don't worry. Every day comes with its own challenge. David said, your word is a light unto, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lamp unto my feet, is, in other words, I just have sufficient light to take one or two steps before the next step appears to me. I'm not saying you should not plan your life. Eh? Plan it. But if what you plan now, you actually got everything as you planned, step by step. In the ne- when you got to 10 years, say, thank God, yes. The way I planned it is the way I entered. You may be out of God's plan. One of our speaker's wife was around last weekend, Pastor Banky, was in church for seven, and she came and she met me. She was my, we were friends in university, and she asked me, how did you become a pastor? I said, I don't know. Really, I don't know. If you ask me any profession I want to do in life, not this one. It wasn't in my plan. You know when you have plan? It wasn't in my plan. Even if you wake me up, I will not even... And I now walked in a place where I saw... Let me say I see church finish. It wasn't my plan. I was I was happy. I planned myself, and it was working well. I got a permanent job seven months into my NYC.
I was dressing like a banker from year three. I was buying business day every Monday morning. And I was declaring my mouth I will never look for a job. Because I know I will be in the corporate world. I will just do some academic work. But everything, <laughs> everything. So when I, don't, when I tell you not to worry, I, I, I know. Your problem today is enough for you than thinking of how it will be tomorrow. It's enough. I want to share some few thoughts about worry. I want you to understand that worry comes to steal the present. You can't live in the present. It comes to steal the present. As I'm here now, some of you cannot hear me. You, can't, you are not hearing me now as I'm talking. You are just here. Yeah, you are no, not here. You are not here. You are, not, you, are, you, are, you are physically, I can see you. <laughs> so worry is there for a failure to be present. That's why your children will tell you, are you mommy, are you listening to me? Because they are asking you questions, you are answering on another level. You are answering them based on what you have thought about their questions. I went for a conference called The Catalyst. The, the, the title of that, of the, the team of that conference that year was Be Present. Be Present. The present you cannot enjoy, tomorrow you are taking bad. And, and, and Jesus addressed it. You know what? The thing, three things that makes you not to be present. They are very big. Food, drink, and clothes. He said, Pastor, no, no, no. It's self-fulfillment. It's self-fulfillment. He said, when you get the self-fulfillment, it reduces back so that you can meet food, clothing, and the basic, so that you don't need to worry. It's these three things. As it, so that when you, you can... As I'm talking now, you are thinking of what you give your children on Monday evening. You are trying to plan the food. You're trying to plan it. You're trying to... <laughs> your clothes... <laughs> I have three weddings. You are, you are enjoy, this wedding is on Saturday. I wonder how you are going for three weddings, but let's, 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 uh, you are thinking right now as I'm talking, the, what I'm saying now, which clothes, okay. Um, Susan has not made my dress. Oh, you, as you are here now, you take your phone, Susan, where's the dress? Say, so let me quickly put that one aside. You are thinking, oh, that one is burnt orange. That one is uh, dirty green. That one is... Uh, uh, <laughs> there's everything I hear now. Different colors I hear. I'm tired. <laughs> Before you know it, there's fuchsia red. You are thinking, oh, how will I, where will I change in all these three places? And my makeup artist has traveled. <laughs> you see, these are the three things that make you not to be present. Uh, based on what is happening in Nigeria today, the next thing is to move. Uh, we move, we move, we move. We J. J. And when we get to that place, if it doesn't work too, we J. There's no, the earth is the Lord. <coughs> and the phone is there. <laughs> there's no. <laughs> when you get worried, there's all kinds of innovation you come up with. All kinds of creativity. All kinds of ways to hide. 
You're worried about your marriage, worried about your children, worried about everything, worried about, even be worried about your grandchildren that you are not yet, you are not yet married, but your grandchildren. You're worried. You're worried. That means that you can't trust God with yourself. You can't trust God with your future. You can't trust God even with your children. And, and, and number two, worry distracts you from the real future. Distracts you from the real future. Uh, you, the way you are now, you are thinking of a bad future. Of a bad future. I've seen people say, oh, I have 20, oh, this 50,000 I'm earning, is it what will make, will, will not make me to buy ML, will not make me to build a house, will not make me do this, will not make me do this. At the end of, you are thinking 10 years time, because in 10 years time, there's a belief that my salary will still be 50,000. And you get creative and innovative. Now, where did they walk? You get very creative. <laughs> you get very creative. Because there's nothing you cannot do when you are fearful, when you are worried. No wonder Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing. He took it further. Be anxious for nothing. You know, you know, I only was reading a scripture today and they, they flashed it in NIV. I said, this lady had to, she has seen my, she saw my message. And I turned over it and it said in verse 19 of Psalm 94 in the NIV. It said, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. When anxiety was filled within me, your consolation brought me joy. And it joy in my life. Your consolation. No, no. It, it didn't say when anxiety was filled within me. You now brought the tin and I was filled with joy. Anything you get now that makes you happy is temporal. It's temporal. Yeah, yeah. The, the iPhone with 13 Pro Max that you have been pursuing is in your hand now. Are you not tired? Huh? <laughs> you are tired. But you are worried that if I don't, somebody told me, and uh, Pastor Daniel Pazonga told me, somebody, a, a person selling phone, a girl called her, called him and said, I, I, I have this money to, I have this money to give to you for the iPhone Pro Max, but uh, it's not complete. I will sleep with you for 15 times to cover up. Now, say, uh, what do you think? Say, it's 15 times too small. Maybe we increase it to, 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 to so that we can balance it. That's the balance payment of, of iPhone Pro Max. <laughs> I have Blackberry. Blackberry Passport. You know how Blackberry was doing you? <laughs> <laughs> I may not know what my future holds but I know the holder of the future and I've entrusted my future into his hands please close your eye Ah, it's not everybody. And tell me how Nigeria will be next year. I know you didn't close your eyes. Some of you close your eyes. Any conclusion you bring out now is wrong. You know why I say you should close your eyes? Because I'm going to the... <laughs> Worry affects your imagination. It affects your imagination. Last year, what you were worried about, did it come to pass? Huh? Why? There are two things that God gave us as a gift, but the enemy fights with us with it. Number one, your memory. And number two, your imagination. 
Your memory was supposed to build an, to the altars to the faithfulness of God constantly. That what God has done for me in the past. No wonder David, when he got to, two things kicked into David's life. As he saw men, 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 including the king who was taller than everybody, could not come out for Goliath. <laughs> David came out and said, I've dealt with the bears and the lions. Memory. Is it, are you going to tell me that the bear did not enjoy him? But he now said, the God that delivered me, faithfulness of his altar. He, he, he built a, a, an altar to the faithfulness of God by his memory. And he now said, this bloody Philistine, his imagine, imagination kicked in. And said, this bloody Philistine, I believe, the same way God did it. Why? He has been faithful in the past. He will still be faithful in the future. Are you not the one that always declared to me, Jesus, the same? Can't you see that most of the scriptures are here? Oh, I know, yeah. He said, Pastor, I know, but let's face reality. And the question I only ask, which of the reality, my own or your own? Or God's own? Because I have my own. My wife has her own. In the same household. But God has his own. <laughs> and if my own does not line up with God's own, no matter how I speak good English, for his ways are higher than my own. His thoughts higher than my own. There's nobody that will go to heaven now as you meet Jesus. Jesus said, my, say, say, my God, I, have not, I, I thought my ways were higher. I thought my thoughts were higher until I met you. You are too much. <laughs> you are too much. Every day we need a constant upgrade. God cannot be upgraded. It's constant. Sometimes the safest place you can be is in the front of a war front. Than in your house. Because in that war from, that's where the will of God is for your life at that point in time. So, close your eyes again. What do you think about next year for your life? In this our wonderful country. I'm aware they have increased school fees now. September is Kosha Karia. Bula Karia Mo Shakaria. Pare Kabara. Some of you say, I thank God that my child is still two years. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are saying, <laughs> see why I didn't marry. <laughs> you are solving it very well. <laughs> I've told my friend, where did the hurry go? Not be this life with me. <laughs> Tap your brother and say, be here, be here, be here. Be here, be here, be here, be here, be here. <laughs> As you tap somebody, say, eh? <laughs> That's why when you leave church, somebody will ask you, say, hmm. Like, you, you listen to that guy. <laughs> <I don't> have... <laughs> Worry has kicked everything. And you know what? You and being generous does not mean that you have the money. It's just that you know how it works. 
Because when people are generous, people want to load them with so many responsibility. When you don't have money, you call the person. When you don't have this thing, you call the person, thinking that the person is your alpha and omega. No, 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 no. It's just that the person that is doing that understands that I can't help but to be generous. I can't help. Why? Naked you came, naked you will go. So some of the things you are storing away, what if something come and say, I require you today? 